Welcome back. Our world is made up of four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Water is in some ways the most magical. We associate it with birth and rebirth. The Havasupai people have held their four waterfalls in the Grand Canyon so sacred that for centuries they kept them a secret. Because of their remote location, the tribe didn't encounter people of European descent until the 19th century. Now, fortunate outsiders like Melinda Hoffman of Tempe, Arizona, get to experience the wonder that the falls inspire. Today, we'll travel with her to these sacred waters. And that layer there, that's where that red part of the Grand Canyon is. So that's where we are now. So that's how you can tell where we are. I've always watched National Geographic when I was a kid and saw them go on these great adventures. But growing up in the inner city with my mom, who was a widow, I never even went to um, summer camp. And I always dreamt about doing something like this. Hey, Miguel, yeah. move over right there. I just want to get a picture of you and Mariah. Right there. OK. Right. Oh, that's great. Cammie and Mariah have stopped me all along this trip and saying, Mom, you know, this was the best thing for us to be all together and experience this, all these wonderful memories, and to be able to experience it all together. So there's three falls up here. There's Navajo, Havasu, Mooney, and there's one more beaver. I think one of the most beautiful things about the Havasupai people is that they're very selfless people. They're very genuine, and it's a privilege to appreciate their culture, to enjoy the surroundings. It is a privilege. It's not a right. This is Havasu Falls. This is why we come here. This is very much a Garden of Eden in the literal sense of the word. And it's important we protect that. I've gone down there several times already, and this time around it was, it was quite a treat to meet Diana. You meet local people from time to time, but actually being able to sit down and sort of hear their perspective on their home and their beautiful existence down there was really neat. This was our summer home. We would come here and we would cultivate because of the river, the creek. In the winter, we would go up onto the plateaus and do the venison hunting and the rabbits and picking of uh, the pinions and the different herbs that we needed for medicine. We were going back and forth, but after we were asked to be put on reservations, the elders chose this place. When we began to be put into boarding schools, Ten generations became lost, and we didn't know where we were going. This is why when I came back from uh, going to school, in the end I realized that my tradition, my people were the strongest part of me, so I became this traditionalist. So I began to um, teach some of the uh, younger people to you know, be strong in their, their, the way they feel as Native people and as Indians. After a while, we finally got the tribe to build the school from Head Start to 8th grade. This gives us time to nurture the children again and to give them their roots. I just want to say what you were saying was so universal. Going back to your culture and being true to yourself made me realize that that's what I needed to do with my girls, to go back to my culture and share with them. This is used in ceremony, so I rub this on Well, I'm Filipino. You and when she gave us a blessing and put ochre in our hands and said, now take this and go out in the world and do the same thing, I'm going to take that literally, going back to the Philippines. To lead someone down the vertical wall at Mooney Falls, that's probably the trickiest, riskiest part of the whole experience. The native people here in this village understand this water is a healing water. And it is not for my people or for myself to say, this is mine and you can't see it. No, I cannot say that. I share what is this beauty. 
my favorite aspect of the whole experience is the swimming part. I think I get 20 years younger whenever I go down there and start swinging in the trees like a monkey. Letting go of the rope, it almost felt like you were flying for just a second there. But the minute my head was out of water, I felt like so invigorated. Then it didn't feel icy cold anymore. It felt great. Notice how having reverence for the Havasupai traditions helped the visitors have a greater appreciation for their own tradition. Everything about the trip was deeply respectful of the land and water. From the size of the tour, which was kept very small, to their allowing only a few visitors to enter the falls at the same time.